Hi, this is Seth David from the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, bringing to you another special screencast. This time we're talking about how to enter payroll into QuickBooks, the detailed method. Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call me right now at 866-945-8070 for information about private trainings. We always record the live session with you so you can review it as often as you like afterwards. Hi, so we're going to enter payroll in the detail format. And of course, if you want to check out the summary form afterwards, there'll be a link to click on at the end of this video that'll let you go right there and see the difference. So entering in payroll, uh, entering payroll in the detailed format is going to require several steps. Let's take a look. First, we have to go to our chart of accounts and see what we need. And the first thing we're going to need to make sure that we do is we're going to need to make sure that we add in a bank account. It's a fictitious bank account, and we're going to call it payroll clearing. Okay, so that bank account has to be in place. This is where we're going to enter in each individual paycheck. And that's going to be important because that's the whole point of this, is to be able to enter it in in detail, which means entering in each individual paycheck. So let's go do that. And then what's going to happen as you watch this video is it's all going to come together how this actually works. Because the, the key here is that we're not going to have each individual paycheck taken out of our actual bank account. So we can't record them there. We need to record them here. And then you're going to see how they're going to net out to the total net payroll, which is the amount that comes out of our bank account. And once we have that in place, it's a simple entry. We write the check out of our bank account. The offset is the payroll clearing account, which will then zero out. And you'll see how this works as I demonstrate it for you. So let's go over to Excel. This is a typical what a summary uh, payroll uh, report might look like. Within your payroll report, there's always a lot of pages, a lot of reports. The one you're going to be looking for is one that kind of lays out the information as follows, as you see here on screen. And it gives you the summary. And if we were just entering payroll in in the summary form, this is all you would need to get the payroll entered. But since we're going to want to enter in the detail here, we need the details. And what that means is in that report that you get from your payroll company, you're going to get something which gives you each individual paycheck listed out. Now what I've done is give you an example in Excel that lays it out in a way that makes it easy for our purposes here, for data entry purposes. Now this template's going to be available for sale in my knowledge store, so if you want you can download it. And when I'm finished, I'm going to blank all this out so you can take the information off your uh, payroll report and for each employee you can key this in. And I'll expand it to allow for more employees before I make it available to you. But the, point, the bottom line then is if you want to make it easier to do your payroll entry in QuickBooks, you can use this form to enter to key your numbers in off your payroll reports and then you'll be able to do what I'm about to do right now which is to walk through how to enter the payroll in detail in QuickBooks and again that means we're going to enter each individual paycheck so I've got four example employees here starting with myself I'm going to flip back over to QuickBooks here and we're going to write a check and the check of course comes out of payroll clearing now, depending on how your payroll is set up, this could be a direct deposit. There could be an actual check number here. So you're going to put the appropriate thing based on that in the check number line. So if it's direct deposit, just put a DD. I'm going to book the payroll as of uh, the Friday before today, the day that I'm recording this. And you're going to add in your employees. Now, I add them in as vendors because if I'm not actually processing payroll through QuickBooks, I don't like to use the employee module. Now what you're going to wind up with here is I, I just copied and pasted the net pay and that's by the way one of the nice advantages of, of taking the time to lay this out in Excel is you can use your copy and paste. So I put the 160295 net up here. Now I need to split that up properly because what most bookkeepers do or I should say what many bookkeepers do and the mistake that, that they typically make is they'll take this whole net pay and book it as payroll expenses which is not correct. You've understated the payroll. The true payroll expense is the gross pay which is this 2000 here. So if I put my 2000 in and then this has the uh, the line items memorized from a previous, you know, from when I entered this previously. So if I keep tabbing down sort of QuickBooks will eventually calculate the difference and put it in there. And then I can just control X to uh, cut it and control V to paste it in the right line. So notice what I'm doing. I'm showing my gross pay of the 2000 in the gross wages line under payroll expenses. Then I'm going to show the difference, which is my payroll liabilities, as a negative so that my check nets out to the right net pay. And this will force it to go into the payroll liabilities account. So let's take a look at the balance sheet and see how this looks. 
as soon as I hit save and close on this, watch what happens. The bank, the bank balance is not going to be affected, but you're going to see the payroll clearing account now show up with a negative 1602.95. You're going to see the payroll expense show up on the profit and loss. So let's pull that up. Right, we'll run this for all dates for a moment. So we'll see the profit and loss show up here. I can narrow this down a bit. And then you're going to see the payroll liabilities at 397.05. Of course, that's going to show up on the balance sheet. So I'm going to say save and close, update this, update this. There it is. Right, I've got my 2,000 in gross wages. I've got my 397.05 in liabilities. There's my net pay now coming out of the payroll clearing. Now I'm going to quickly run through booking the other paychecks. Let's do Joe Schmo. Write a check, make sure it's out of payroll clearing. Joe, net pay 400. Come back here, gross pay 500. The difference, let QuickBooks do that work for me. Save and new. Next one, direct deposit. Rodney King, net pay was 237. Gross pay 250. And let QuickBooks figure out the difference for me. That goes into payroll liabilities. And watch what's happening on the balance sheet as I enter these. Save and close. It's updating. Got one more check to write. Direct deposit. Johnny Utah. Paste the net in. Go get the gross. Paste that in. Let QuickBooks figure out the difference. Paste it in. Save and close. Now I've got my 3,554 net pay. Let's go to the payroll report. I've got 3,553 here because of a rounding issue. So let's fix that real quick. And let me just drop a deposit in here to correct that. So I want to make deposits. I want to go into payroll clearing with it. I'm going to use a cash over and short. Now, mind you, you are not likely going to have this. The reason I have a rounding issue on this is because I used Excel to plan some of the numbers and I used formulas to calculate some of those numbers, so I've got rounding issues. You're going to be keying right off the payroll report, so there should really this should really never be an issue. But I'm going to take the time because just in case somehow for some reason it comes up, um, this is how you would deal with it. So let's push this forward to the 10th because I want to make sure that this correction comes up a day after all the paychecks. I want to kind of keep that separation here. But the main thing is I want to make sure that my payroll clearing account actually comes out to what my true net pay is. And now it does. It matches exactly the 3,553. Now we have two payments to record that come out of the bank account. I'm going to go back to the payroll summary because now at this point it's not much different than what we would do in the summary form. In the summary form we're just going to record two payments. The um, net pay and the taxes. Of course, in the summary form, we're going to enter the net pay a little differently, which is why at the end of this video, if you are interested, I'll give you a link to click on to watch the, the other version of uh, how to enter payroll, which is if you want to do it in summary form. But for now, I need to write two checks now out of my actual bank account based on what's really coming out of my bank account, the 3553 and the 1275.09 for taxes. Let's come back to QuickBooks. I want to write a check. This one is coming out of the real bank account. So make sure you update that. And it's probably coming out electronically, so we'll do electronic funds transfer. And sometimes it comes out the same day. Let's say it comes out a day later. All right. We're going to write the check to our payroll company for the net pay, which is 3553 This is what really comes out of my bank account. Now, what's the offset? Very simply, where the offset is going to be that payroll clearing bank account, that fictitious bank account that we created, because that's how this is going to zero out now and you'll see it right here on the balance sheet. It's going to take this negative 3,553 and make it zero and of course it's going to deduct from the actual bank account this same amount. So let's click save and close. Balance sheet updates. Sure enough the payroll clearing account comes off the balance sheet because there's no balance anymore. So that's how we deal with the net pay. Now we're going to deal with the taxes. The taxes is going to be another check out of the actual bank account and it's probably coming out electronically and let's say it goes out to our payroll company. Now the total check is going to be this 127509. But that's not exactly what we want to, to, to do here because again the, the, the classic mistake bookkeepers make is they'll take this whole amount and book it to the, uh, the tax expense account, which is not correct. Because some of this has to be allocated to the payroll liabilities to zero this out, right? This 744.46 is collectively what was taken out of all the employees' paychecks and now we're sending it into the government. So what I need to do is I need to split this up. The first line is going to go to the payroll liabilities. 
744.46, and the difference is going to go to the employer taxes. And I purposely named the account taxes employer because when you're doing the data entry and you're naming these accounts, you want to think in terms of what am I going to look for? What am I going to want to type? Well, it's much easier to think of taxes as the thing to type. So I call it taxes employer rather than employer taxes. But you have to, of course, you know, name it the way that you're comfortable, the way that based on how you your brain works. That's how my brain works. So once I've got this done, keep your eyes on the balance sheet, keep your eyes on the profit and loss. There's my cash overshort, by the way, for the penny. Once I save this, it's going to zero out the payroll liabilities and it's going to show the 53063 as a payroll expense on the books. Save and close. There it is. So now my true total payroll expense is the 4280. My liability is zero out as soon as I click on the balance sheet it updates. And there it is there, folks. We've got the uh, bank account showing the right balance. And then the two things we want to verify is the two accounts that absolutely have to zero out. The payroll clearing has to be zero and the payroll liabilities has to be zero. The fact that they're not on the balance sheet anymore is a good tip, but you still want to go in as a matter of habit and double check these. And you should see it nice and clean like this, where I've got amounts coming out of the paychecks, accumulating to the total, and here's the amount that went out to the government. That, that split on this check, where I took part of it out of payroll liabilities to zero out. That, my friends, is the right way to get your payroll entered in the full detail such that later on I can run a payroll report. I can look at these gross wages now. I can double click this and if I want to total it by payee, I can do that. So as, as this accumulates, as I have more and more payrolls, then I can see very clearly how much each employee has been paid. When I do the summary form, which is what you're going to be able to click over to see now, I won't have that information in QuickBooks. And again, it's, there's no right or wrong about that. It's just a question of how you want your books to reflect payroll. How much detail do you want to have? And the balancing part of this is balancing the fact that the extra detailed data entry, especially if you have a lot of employees, is going to take longer which means it's costing you money because you're paying somebody to do that data entry so, and time is money so it's going to cost you a little bit more but <coughs> the question excuse me is to decide is it worth that extra money to have that extra detail in quickbooks personally i think in most cases that it is i think it's worth it because i'm i'm an information junkie i like to know that i can run reports and get this kind of information out of quickbooks so it's for you to decide, of course, what you're comfortable with and whether or not it's worth the money and the time for you to have that extra information in QuickBooks. So go ahead. If you want to see the summary version of how to enter payroll, click the link up top, and we'll take a look at that and show you how it's done. As always, if you have any questions, email me, Seth at NerdEnterprises.com. Of course, I'm available for consult. Give me a call, 866-945-8070, and we'll get you entering your payroll the right way right away. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web. Hi, this is Seth David from the world-famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, bringing to you another special screencast. This time we're talking about how to enter payroll into QuickBooks, the detailed method. Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call me right now at 866-945-8070 for information about private trainings. We always record the live session with you so you can review it as often as you like afterwards.